is going on everybody welcome back into Barley Studios. Today in the studio we are working and continuing the Goliath Bird Eater Tarantula Diorama for another amazing customer and artist, Kirsten Conjured over on TikTok. So if you would like to go back and check out some of the other videos, the sculpting and things like that that led up to where we are now, we're going to begin the process of painting the base. And by painting the base I mean painting the base. This is what you have to look forward to in this video. It's around 18 minutes long or so. Uh, it is basically us uh, detailing painting this in an overall rock texture. Now this is not the final form. It is gonna have more to it later on in the processes. We're gonna add some realistic dirt. We're gonna add some resin water features uh, and a bunch more. And not to mention here soon, now this is gonna be video number six and video number seven, which will be right after this one, we're gonna be painting the rotting log. Now this is gonna of course go hand in hand together. Uh, if you're keeping track of this, we did sculpt these at two different times. Uh, so you get to see all of this amazing sculpt work and paint work in their own individual videos so you can break it apart into, into just really nice bite-sized pieces. Uh, so this is coming soon. However, in this video, we are indeed gonna be painting this. So let's go ahead and turn around here, guys. Let's get out some paints and let's paint this awesome rock texture tarantula base. All right, guys, so let's just jump straight into the content here where we're going to be painting this bad A little diorama. So I'm going to go ahead and magically have a glove on my left hand. Cool editing there. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the air gun here to go ahead and begin applying the Mars Black thinned out base. Now, I do like to thin out my own acrylics at times and use them in the air gun. Uh, and, but also that allows it to kind of clog up sometimes because <laughs> uh, I don't have enough pressure for this type of air gun. I'm just using the small hobby air gun here. It's just your very, very basic rudimentary one and it does absolutely everything that I need it to do. So don't ever feel like you have to spend a lot of money on an air gun. This one does great. Now, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to apply the Mars Black base over and over and over again, but I'm going to kind of work in a count, uh, clockwise motion around the overall base here until I can just get the kind of general coverage that I want. Uh, I really want to water it in so that it kind of covers in all the little nooks and crannies so that way when I come over with a dry brush, I'm not working extra just to kind of make sure all of that bleached out DOS air dry clay is covered up using my paper there just to kind of block it off as I go around. Uh, and the, the very rolled over edge of that clay where it meets the actual wood base isn't gonna have a ton of detail. It's gonna have a lot of shadow just cause there are little cliffs of rock formation there. So I'm really not too worried about that. But this is definitely a process, you know, um, just, just adding the Mars black in a little bit at a time, allowing it to dry and then come back over it again until you're just really satisfied with how the overall coverage is looking. And depending on how much you thin out your paints depends on how many layers you really need to do before you get a good layer. See, I'm laying that right there on pretty thick, uh, whereas the, the very first part was actually quite thin. So it all depends on the mixture and how much acrylic or how much paint thinner or, or cleaner that you add into your mixture, whether you're using water or some pre-made mixture. Now the very back of the diorama is more so of a flat surface. This is probably something that they may like lean, uh, put up towards the, the back of a wall or something like that. Uh, but it just needs to have something there and it's gonna have a general rock formation with some nice mossy texture and things like that. So it's gonna have a little bit of material on the back of the diorama, but the main focus is it's supposed to be forward facing. Making sure not to forget where the actual rotted log is gonna be. I'll probably come back later on and I'll probably give that a really thick, uh, kind of a brush layer of Mars Blatt before I uh, fully put the log on uh, and then put any of the substrates of organic uh, dirt and, and moss and, and things like that on the actual base. I want to make sure that the, the, the Mars Black ne isn't necessarily showing through any of those, uh, those dark recesses of organic matter, but I do want um, a little bit of the shadow that I generally put under the ends of the log to be visible. 
I'm just using some of the excess that I had from, from the night to just go ahead and, and wash it in by hand with a brush here. Uh, it's not really necessary. I just didn't want to waste that, that thinned out paint just because I'm not going to need it in the air gun doesn't mean I don't want to use it in certain areas. So I'm just using that as a means just to kind of highlight some of the shadows, the recesses. Uh, and I'm just trying to focus on where it may be showing through when I get to the mulches and the dirt on the actual diorama base. Now, of course, this is a lot darker on my side. For some reason, sometimes the camera does lighten things quite a bit. So just be aware that, that when this dries fully overnight on the first day, uh, it does come back the second day quite a bit darker. You're going to see that jump here in just a moment. And this took me around four days to completely finish out just because I wasn't using a heat gun during this process. I was just letting it dry naturally and then moving to the next stage of the actual aging process. You can really see that it's really getting good coverage now. As you continue to layer in some of those more black washes, it really just start to thicken out, making sure that I'm trying not to miss any spots around the edges there. It's very easy to miss spots. And then it's almost the way we need it to be. So now we're gonna jump into the second day here, and this is where we're gonna begin the process of actually adding some dry brushing here. What do you think, guys? I think it looks pretty good at this point, but we're gonna continue on with the next stage here. All right, so at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and begin the process of dry brushing. Now, this is such a satisfying process here, guys. Uh, if y'all have never had the opportunity to dry brush rocks with lighter tones, just go ahead, take time, sculpt a few rocks. Uh, I have some videos on my YouTube channel just showing how to sculpt them uh, over a foam core base, and then you just go ahead and detail paint them. I have that in a time-lapse and a real-time video under tips and tricks, so go check that out. Uh, and of course, this is also covering the same manner of painting, but applying the uh, the dry brushing to the, the top coat of rock is absolutely insanely satisfying. Being able to see all of those little micro details that you sculpted into that formation come, come forward. It is such a great process. Now, it does look quite a bit bleached out here. And that is completely okay. I like my rock formations to start with really bright highlights before I dinge them back down. Uh, and then if I want to apply any highlights at the very end, then I can do so. Uh, but this is more so uh, uh, Mars Black than, than uh, Titanium White. And those are the only two colors that I'm using right now at this point in time. Mars Black and Titanium White. And depending on how uh, dark I want that gray uh, dry brush to be depends on how much of each individual color I pull forward uh, to use on my brush. Uh, most areas I am kind of brushing my paint off onto that uh, paper towel there. Uh, and I leave that in the frame here so you understand that that I am using that to brush off my the paint off my brush so that I can just give it a nice thin glaze of paint over those high spots. So this is indeed a good thorough dry brushing. When you are dry brushing, just try your best to go against the grain if possible. And then depending on where you're kind of painting depends on how heavily how heavily you want to lay into the paint or the brush. You can really see that detail around the back come forward, whereas when we went over it with the Mars Black base, uh, it was really flat, really uh, uh, non-distinguishable from the surrounding rock there. With the dry brushing, you can really see the recesses that have been sculpted into, sculpted into it there. What do you think, guys? This is looking pretty good so far. Uh, and now we're going to begin the process of beginning to introduce some browns. Now, depending on the browns that I want, sometimes I'll do this right after I start to apply the highlights here with the dry brushing. It depends on how long I wait for it to dry. Uh, I am using a raw sienna, a burnt umber, and a, a raw umber here. Those are the three main colors that I like to use, but I will introduce other browns if I feel the need to. Uh, and you can achieve a lot of your browns by adding Mars Black to any of those browns just to get a darker tone or, or titanium white into it to get a, a lighter color. Uh, so you just uh, determine the overall color of the rock that you want to go for and then you just run with it and just see how it turns out for you. You can really see that the brown is really starting to come forward on those high spots there. And I'm really going out of my way just to apply a really dark uh, uh, layer of, of brown 
uh, to, the, to the bottom of that water feature. It's going to have like a two puddle part there, whereas the rocks right there are creating a little barrier between them. And I want it to look like it's cascading water down away from the log onto this little recessed spot here. And when I get done with it, I just really want it to look nasty and like it has a good film of mossy green uh, mud on it. That's all. Uh, I, I just want it to have a nice caked on look. So if you were to imagine this as like a terrarium base, then if you were not to clean out that water tray or anything, it would create just a natural algae from like the tap water or something like that. Or if you found this out in the wild, this would be that, that little puddle that just keeps refilling over and over and over again. Uh, when we get to the, the, uh, the resin pour stage, I'm going to introduce some fun little features in here that I've, I've, uh, been looking forward to so look forward to some of that but right now i'm just kind of getting the overall grunge nasty muddy looking color into that now just remember that i'm going to let that water puddle that's in there dry this is doing two things one is going to give it just a natural look of dried water in the bottom of the the water feature but two it's also allowing me to know if i have an actual legitimate hole in the air dry clay going down into the foam base if i do then all that water will leak out before i completely get done uh, and if i come back in the morning or just a few hours later and it's still there then i feel confident that i could probably Probably resin directly onto the air dry clay over the paint so I don't have to seal it or anything like that I can just paint and um, and then just do the the resins right after days will pass between those two videos so don't feel like they're like back to back or anything like that uh, we're gonna do quite a few stages before this is even remotely ready for any kind of clear coats or anything like that but that would be coming later on in the processes so continuing the overall brown texture around, you can see that the overall base is really starting to transform. The overall color tone is starting to transform and it really is becoming more organic and less like it came out of a machine. So as we finish up the second day here, you can see that the water is still sitting there even after I finished out browning out some of the rocks there. Uh, and I'm not really too worried at this point that I have any kind of holes there, but I will kind of keep an eye on that because I'll do that puddle simulation quite a few times to build up that overall nasty look in the bottom of that hole. You can see that I've already uh, let that dry up there and we're moving on to the next day here. Uh, and you can see that that bright tone of brown uh, puddle there it actually darkened out and settled in uh, so as that uh, water evaporates there it kind of changes the overall tone now the color that i'm going to introduce here this is day number three here uh, this is going to be a sepia so as you can see here, I am using that little uh, dropper there. I'm sucking out the the color, uh, or not just the color, the water uh, of the puddle. Anything or anything that's a remnant of left behind. It's already left its pigments and its colors behind in the pools, but I'm just going to remove any of the excess and we'll use that the rest of the way around the actual diorama base here. So we're going to pull that up and we'll reuse it here in a moment. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to continue using this existing sepia wash. And I'm just going to kind of gently go over any of those, uh, those titanium white mixed brown high spots. And I'm also going to let it pull into any of the, the darker shadow recesses. When you pull it into the recesses or any kind of like little small divots uh, and just let that dry, let the pigment settle down as that water evaporates and then just uh, it'll it'll hold the color in a, in a darker way. And yet as you continue going over the same spots with more and more layers, it gets darker and darker. That's the great thing about sepia. It is just an absolute color that you can just use to rock out an amazing project. Uh, it's something small, but it really does make a difference in the long term. Uh, overall detail work of a tumbler or a diorama. We are also going to begin the process of introducing the sap green and a raw umber here soon. So just be aware that we're going to apply more of an algae type of texture to this and then do more of the puddles later on to achieve the overall nasty muddy look at the bottom of the, the pour here. 
when we do do the resin pour it will probably be more of a clear color than than i really had in, originally intended just because i don't want to cover up all of those little details that we have at the bottom of the pool i'm also uh, thinking about introducing a few things later on that will kind of surprise y'all and add extra little details to the overall project but i'm still thinking about whether i want to introduce those or not so we'll just see how they go i don't want to get your hopes up on anything that may not come to fruition here I am just kind of using some of that excess there. I really didn't need any more of it here, uh, at least at this point in time. And I'm just gonna kind of just brush that over and let that drain down. And then uh, if I get to a point where I, I'm not needing that anymore, I can just use a, a little plunger just to get that out. So some of the process can get kind of like, you know, just repetitive just because you're trying to build up those darker tones layer by layer. And I'm really focusing on these little cliffs. The underside of those cliffs, I want them to have the same overall brown tone, but they just need to be a lot, a lot, a lot darker. Um, that way that it, whatever I do do to the existing rock formations or under them, that they just have the right overall shadowed tone. And I'm trying to make that as realistic as possible. And I want the eye to catch that no matter what kind of light is being cascaded down or out and around this i want to make sure that those shadows are painted into it anyways kind of using that same sepia there around the back side of the diorama there in the same way but i'm just being a very free handed with this i'm just really just going over it with a nice glaze here and i'm just letting it just kind of uh, absorb some of those browner tones that way it just kind of blends with the front of the diorama also i don't want to neglect it but also i don't really think the the back of the overall diorama has to have all the de the details there as you can see here, we're going to start to introduce the sap green. That sap green is not alone there. I'm going for more of a pukey color, <laughs> a puke color, more of a, a sap green and a raw, uh, raw umber here. Uh, I was wanting to say uh, a different brown there, but it, it is indeed raw umber here. Uh, sap green and raw umber, and I'm just kind of pulling those out, mixing them together, and it makes a pea green soupy color. I'm going to go ahead and also start to pull in more sap green as I bring that to the edges of the little uh, uh, watering bowl <laughs> uh, or the water feature, as it were. Uh, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and layer those in so that it makes it look like that mossy algae texture is kind of like kind of climbing up the outsides of the bowl. And I want to make sure that it looks like that that part of the water, even if I don't f uh, fully pull resin all the way up into the top of that, uh, then it looks like that that mossy algae is trying to escape some of that bowl uh, and it makes it just look very worn and textured coming in with a little bit of that sepia that i had left over kind of grunging out the edges of some of that mossy color there uh, and then i don't know really where i'm going to take that the very bottom of that quite yet uh, we're going to introduce some more clays and some more resins with that here shortly as you can see here, the overall uh, water feature is still moist and it does have the puddling still there. I'm going to let that dry completely without removing any of that, but this time it has that sap green in there. What do you think so far, you guys? I think this thing has turned out beyond my expectations. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I did weigh this uh, here here soon, uh, recently for the customer there. Uh, and it is weighing in at, as it is without the rotted log, around 5.6 pounds. So it is quite a doozy. Uh, but once we add the log, it's going to be around 8 or 9 pounds without the spider. I think this thing turned out absolutely incredible, and I really do hope you guys enjoyed the overall process. Here I am placing the actual sculpted log, which will be the next portion of the series. We're going to be painting that out next. Uh, and you can see that the white against the painted base really makes <laughs> that painted base pop against the black background and the, uh, the raw baked Sculpey original clay. 
Alright guys, I really hope y'all enjoyed this painting video. Although it was one of the shorter videos in the series overall, I think that it had a ton of information. We used Windsor & Newton acrylic uh, paints to give it a good Mars black base coat, and then we started to dry brush and build up those uh, browns and nice uh, dark gray tones, and then eventually we were able to start introducing more of the inks. Now just remember we used Windsor & Newton acrylic paints for this, and then we used uh, Dollar and Rowney acrylic inks for this. I really love these inks, guys. They come in an assortment of colors, and you can get them in the craft stores. They are a little bit on the pricey side, like they're like four or five dollars for each one, but they do last a very long time and they have a little dropper for each individual container. They take you a long way. I've been using one for almost a year, so uh, there's a lot in that little jar. Uh, uh, the overall design is absolutely incredible. I'm so beyond excited how it's turning out. We have the wood base, which is stained in American walnut. We have the XBS foam base, uh, which if you haven't had the opportunity to see that, definitely go back and check that out. It's where we're like layering and sculpting the foam before we begin with the uh, air dry clay. Then we have the DOS air dry clay base, and then we have the overall painting of the said base, and then we have a different type of clay for the actual log, and that log is made out of Sculpey Original. Uh, Kirst, uh, uh, Yvonne over at Kirsten Conjured wanted a lot of different clays in this project, a lot of different techniques, and I hope that she's really enjoying how I'm breaking these videos apart. In the next video of this series, video number seven, we are going to be painting this awesome little realistic rotting log. Now, it's going to have a different tone than the rock formation here. Now, just remember that the rock formation is not going to hold this consist consistent gray tone all the way across. We're going to add dirt and organic matter later on down the road. However, this is going to have more of a lighter tone. It's going to be a little bit more bleached out. It's going to look more like it's rotting, like it's weathered. The weather that is uh, is taking all the color out of the wood is slowly starting to deteriorate it into just a fine powder, which is going to deteriorate into the overall base. So we got a long ways to go, guys. And don't forget, we are also going to uh, apply that water feature. You saw that I came in and I applied the kind of mossy green, dirty brown color to the bottom of these pools. And I may come in yet again and do another layer. And that's just building up that, that material so that it looks like it's really thick and nasty, muddy type of uh, texture. Uh, and then we'll kind of come in later on with some surprises along the way to kind of add little extra details into that before we actually add the resin. So that will probably be a video on its own. I really do hope y'all enjoyed this part of the series. It was absolute blast to be able to sit down and paint this in a few different days. And I look forward to the next video. I really do hope y'all are enjoying the series. If you want to check out the entire playlist, it is currently listed on my YouTube channel. So hop over to my profile, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and tell me what you think. Do you think this is an awesome rock texture base? I think so, and I think you should too. Thank you for watching. Check out all of these awesome videos.